Today it's the 4th of January and it happens to be my birthday and also the first day that I have to get back to work after the holidays. And no, we are not going to work on any cars. Oh no! And we're gonna start right away. It's a bit of a climb to get there. That's the last step. We did a lot of work in the tower room. We finished up the ceiling in the past and uh, we also finished up the plastering with the final coat on two walls. Now I still have two other walls to go. And these are some of the walls we still have to finish up. Uh, although this one is already fairly done, but we have some other areas that we still need to finish inside the openings to the windows. And I don't know why I have so many flies here. I mean, I put, turn on the heat and I've got massive amounts of flies here. I don't know where they come from. Maybe some dead birds from the attic, that's possible. Anyway, uh, so let's start with that. And it's especially that area that I'm gonna work on tonight. So the size of the window frames and the arch on the top. And since we go into plaster, I want to have a bit of heat. So those that know me, they know that I always talk too much and oh, no. it doesn't make no difference by getting a year older. So I'm going to start with sanding actually the parts that I need to plaster up. And I'm not going to plaster to the premix, which is kind of a, it's called a fill and finish. It's a very fine putty pre-made. Now you can make your own if you want. And for that, you're going to need a couple of tools, of course. So putting the filler onto the wall, uh, for that, you're going to need a knife. And this is the kind of knife that I'm using. Uh, that is not a knife, of course. Um, and you've got to make sure it's absolutely clean. And, and I just sanded it down because I left it a little bit uncleaned last year. But it went off very smoothly. A lot of people tell me that I'm buying way too many tools and too expensive tools. But to be very honest, if you do this kind of work, you really need good quality tools. And this sander, I don't know how many walls it has been doing before, but it's a pretty good brand. Not that I'm going to make a commercial for it. And my sander is connected to a vacuum cleaner that starts automatically as soon as I turn on my sander. Which makes it, of course, very handy. And by sucking the dust away through these holes in my paper, I have almost no dust in the room. So I'm going to start sanding the wall and I'm going to use a grid of 120. Um, you can use other grids if you want, like a 60 or an 80, but 120 is, is quite all right. Um, it all depends on how much you need to take off. If it's a very thick piece that you need to take off, then I would go for a 60, but that's not necessary right now. So I'm going to get on the scaffold and start sanding. So, let's start. Okay, well, that part is already looking pretty good. So I'm going to continue now with the rest and then you'll see when I'm done and then we start putting some plaster up. I'm going to try tonight to finish up this whole area. I don't know if it's going to succeed or not, but let's try. And look at all these flies that are flying around. I have no idea where these guys are coming from. I mean, most of them are dead anyway, but still, it, it's weird. Very weird. And often the best tools are your hands to feel if the profile is okay and smooth enough. So still a lot of sanding to be done here, over here, but this side already feels quite all right. I need to get a new piece of sanding paper, but I will turn off the camera and I'll continue. I've sanded everything down, so now it's time for some finisher. And that is nothing special really. Just a little bit of rubbing stuff on there. Thank you. 
Get it as smooth as possible. That's it. Well, we'll have a little bit more here. Here we go. And that will do the job. The next area. Okay. That's the good thing about this pre-made putty. Um, if you have to mix it yourself, you gotta be real quick because it dries faster. This is a much slower drying process, but I have my kind. You know? I'm sure that other people can do this a lot faster than I can, but I always try to get it as smooth as possible because I don't need to sand a lot afterwards. I think that is looking all right. Uh, maybe a little bit more here on the bottom where the old joins, joins the new. All right, finishing strokes. And now I'll do the rest. It looks like we are almost done. And today it's the 6th of January and I have completed the second window frame already with the plaster. So now it's time for some other work because I need to work on the attic. And just in case you have missed that ceiling uh, restoration last year, here it is, it's uh, pretty massive. So now I need to get to the tower attic through this opening. And it's pretty high. I'm going to install two LED lights and each one of them is 3,600 lumen. So that's a lot of light. And in fact, I'm only burning twice 18 watt. I'm going to install this with pre-cabled flex tube and this is uh, three times two and a half square millimeters. Uh, there's one ground and then of course the two live wires. And this is pretty handy to install it and I will run it along the rough rafters of the roof. So I'm going to take this stuff to the attic and I'll show you around a little bit on the attic and then we're gonna start installing those lights. These are not droppings from a big rat. This is actually from an oil. They eat their prey with skin and bones. And then a little bit later, they kind of throw up uh, the residue and it's kind of encapsulated in these droppings. So if you take that apart, you should find some bones and teeth and all this. So let me see if I can do this. I can see already the fur. Oh, you gotta look closely. See, here is already a little bone. See that bone here? That's most likely a bone from a mouse or something like that it's been eating. Uh, let me see what else we got. Yeah. There's a lot of fur inside. Probably a little bit of the skull. Uh, this must be part of the skull of the mouse or whatever it was. Um, I don't know. A lot of fur. Um, here's another little bone. Uh, let me see if I can get it. It's cleaned up a bit. So you hear that? Is another little bone. Uh, very impressive, I think. Um, and this is how you can recognize that this was a an oil. Here you have some little teeth. Um, so this must have been really a mouse or a very small animal. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put up some of these brackets to hold uh, the light fixture. So that should be good. 
And here is the light fixture and all what it takes is press it on. As far as I know. All right. There we go, that's it. So now I will have to cable all this up. But first of all, I'm gonna put the other one up. I have a watertight light switch which I can open up and of course I need to install it all uh, so I'm gonna bolt this down to the wall and here I will have to take off the cover I assume uh, yeah there we go because I have to be able to bolt it down afterwards so that goes on the side this is a junction box um, which I'm gonna need to make all the connections and again I will have to prime that open with the screwdriver and see what's inside there's not a lot inside I have all the cables coming in and then I make the junction between the different wires with these special um, click on things they are very fast uh, all you need to have is a naked wire and you just slide it in there and it just locks really good stuff um, I really like that all right so let me start installing these boxes first and then we're gonna run up the cables now for the cables I'm going to use cable attachments like this so um, that's where they are so that goes on the beam and then the uh, flexible tube goes in between and then you know you just click it in with a bridge that goes over it and then you're done so let me start installing things So this is the junction box, I already made some connections, so now I'm going to do the last connections. So this is my mains incoming, this is going to my light switch and then it returns back. It's just hooking up these individual connectors, not very complex. Um, and those are very handy connectors, you just need to push in the wires all the way to the back and pull back a bit. Alright, so that's it. And I don't need just to tuck them away inside the box and we're all done here. And now I can seal it up. Oops. Yes. All right. So this is actually a double pole switch, but I'm not going to hook it up as double pole because this is really a very dry area and I only have two wires. So I'm going to use maybe L1 and one and see how long they have to be all right so that should be good enough like this and i like to stick with these pliers i know you have special strippers available um, but i've always been doing like this open up the contacts all right so for L input So let's put the bulbs up and these are LED lights by the way and I think I mentioned that before but they look like TL lights don't they? But they are really LED lights. I think this is about right. Yep. And the last one goes 
in like so. And then we can try them out. So this didn't take me too long, probably about an hour and a half. If I didn't have to film, it would even be shorter. Uh, all right, so let's see if uh, we can turn them on. So let's give it a try and see if the light is actually working. And I think that looks really good. And believe me, I also do break things and I actually happened to drop the LED tube. So now I have to get another one. The lights are working and I'm going to start cleaning up the attic and then we start with the insulation and the strengthening of the roof. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of insulation laying here that we still have to drag all the way up into the tower attic to get it installed. If you remember last year, we kind of rebuilt this oak ceiling. We put some new beams in where necessary, we then we shot blasted it. But now it's time actually to insulate the top of it. So the attic has to be insulated so this room can stay nice and warm. The roof of the tower was renovated 15 years ago and I installed brand new natural slates onto that and they will last forever. There's nothing wrong with it. We also installed at the time a new subroof and we replaced the rafters that needed to be replaced. So all by all, this roof has been standing there for 15 years. There are no leaks and it has withstand many, many storms already. So nothing wrong with the roof as such. But still, I think I like to enforce it a bit. And at the time I postponed it because first of all, I wanted to have that ceiling done. And now we can actually do that. So I'm going to put up additional rafters onto the roof, enforce it, and then we'll insulate actually the ceiling or the floor, no matter which way you want to call it. So let's have a look on the wood that I just got. And here's all the wood that we now need to drag up to the attic. I will use pine, uh, which is actually treated against um, insects and rot. So that's going to go on the floor. And for the vertical and horizontal rafters, I'm going to be using uh, this kind of uh, pine wood. This is not treated, but it's more than good enough. Uh, it will certainly last my lifetime. It's a cold wind outside. Hopefully it doesn't start raining. So these are about four meters 20 long. And I'm going to put it through the opening that I made in the ceiling so I can drag them up. So this is the attic of the tower room and as you can see we got some pretty big oak beams here in the middle. There's about eight of them and they used to form a structure to support the pear shaped form that was on top of the roof prior to World War I and then it was shot into pieces and it was not replaced. But the support structure remained in place and I will give you a little bit of a close up in a few seconds. You can already see that we have a big beam here where I'm sitting on right now. That's the beam that we installed last year to support the ceiling. And at the end, it wasn't really necessary, but I'm still quite happy that we did it. So uh, let me give you a little bit of a better close on that structure here in the middle. And then we're going to have a look on the sides of the roof where I'm going to uh, enforce the roof with additional rafters and a support uh, on the floor, actually. And as you can see, we got these big uh, oak cross connections and these big beams that are going straight up. I think one of those beams must be at least about 100 kilograms, if not more, uh, because it is oak actually, and I don't know how old it is, but I suspect it's around 1600 or something like this, because that's when the tower was built. Um, there's eight of them, so that will easily add up to about 1000 kilograms. So that's pretty heavy stuff. Um, initially, I was planning to remove it, but then finally I decided, well, why should I? Why should I not keep it? Because it's part of the history and um, the ceiling is more than strong enough. What I'm planning to do is to support these rafters with a vertical rafter. And you've seen the wood that we have downstairs. So this is gonna go on like so. So we have very strong support. And then we'll also connect another horizontal 
rafter like so. So that will make a pretty nice triangle and it's going to make that roof so much stronger. Um, not that it's really necessary as I mentioned before, but uh, I think it's worthwhile doing it. On the floor I will bolt down the streeted planks and that's where the vertical rafters will be supported on. When I installed those oak planks, I made sure that they overlap with each other, so we did a cutout. So now you can see the cutouts, left and right and opposite, will just fall in like that. However, uh, because this is oak, uh, this tends to shrink a bit over time. So it may very well be that at some moment in time um, a nut will actually fall out or the gap gets a little bit wider. Now you're not going to see much uh, from that from below uh, because it's so high up. But if I'm placing insulation up here, which is the intent of course, and I have that laying downstairs, that has a shiny aluminum side. And of course that will be visible. So I'm going to install first a full over here. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that you use uh, for roofing um, and that has a black side on one side and I'm just going to put it up here all over the, the whole floor and then on top of that I will place the insulation. So that's the first thing uh, I'm going to do and that's going to be a little bit of fiddling because I have to move around between all these different parts. So let me show you what that part is. And this is the foil that I'm going to use to place on the floor. Uh, one side is kind of velt and it's black and on the other side you have um, a gummy rubbery side which is the blue side and a self-adhesive strip so you can overlap making sure that nothing moves around. Now that is typically used underneath tiles on the roof but I'm going to use it here on this ceiling so when you look from underneath and we would have gaps on the floor because the oak planks will live you're only going to see some black stuff and nothing shiny as such. So, um, let me start with this because this is going to be a little bit tricky to do. Okay. So the complete floor is now covered with the fleece plus. So now we can start uh, to install the uh, rafters to support the roof. That's it for now guys. I hope you enjoyed it and very soon um, you can watch part number two where we're going to install the rafters and the insulation. Thank you for viewing. Bye bye.